God bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come down. Your children need you. Men's ministry needs the Holy Spirit tonight. We thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray tonight. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Abeng. Uh, good evening, uh, men of uh, Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Um, we thank God for giving us the wonderful opportunity to come back again tonight to continue with our studies. Um, Pastor Pa? Pastor Pa? Okay, let us, let, let us pray. Father, we thank you a lot for bringing us together tonight as we are about to start our studies, O oh Lord. We beseech you, O oh Lord, to be present with us. Father, please consecrate your message. Use me as an instrument, O oh Lord, to reach out to your children. Do not let us be here as alone, O oh Lord, but do us of that world. Consecrate this message, O oh Lord. And give us every cause to glorify your holy name. Open our hearts, Father. We thank you, Lord. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. We, were, we, we have done so far, um, out, out of that paper too, uh, we are, we are uh, last, last uh, Monday, we did, um, the last one, men need reassurance of their of their gifts it's uh, what we are going to do today we did men need accountability which we we, we finished with and then uh, so we're going to start with men need reassurance of their gifts men need reassurance of their gift now <clears throat> it, it starts with uh, it says, how many men do you know who do not enter or do not ever reach their potential in the spirit because they are paralyzed with doubt or with fear. How many men do you know that because of fear, because of doubt, they do not reach their potential? This is a situation in which a lot of people they have the potential but because of fear because of doubt they never reach their potential and the typical example of such a case is the the rich young man if you remember the rich young man went to jesus and said master what can i do to get enter the kingdom of heaven and the master asked him what did the scripture say he said, he said that um, you must worship your God, your, your Lord, you must respect your father and mother. And, and the Lord said, you have answered well. He said, but that still remains something that you have to do. And that is, go and sell everything that you have and follow me. He doubted. The young man, what did he do? He was very sad because he had a great possession. He had a lot of money. And so, so it's typical of many of us today that because of the wealth that this man has, he had doubt, he was afraid. And if I sell everything I have, how am I going to get them back again? But he forgot that you cannot uh, have two things at the same time. You have to live one for the other. You have to sacrifice something to get something. So that's how many men do you know who do not ever reach their potential? And that's why Jesus Christ said, Verily I say unto you, it will be very, very it will be easy for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is the story with many of us, many of Christians today. They they they, they have a lot of potentials. The Holy Spirit wants to use them, but it takes time before before they can be convicted by the Holy Spirit because of this, the, 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 the second God that they are worshipping. It could be their job. 
It could be their family. It could be their possession. It could be anything. So that is what the Bible is telling us here. And then the second one, it said, if a regular man, if a regular man aware of his daily shortcoming, as we read in 1 John 1, 8, which says that if we say that we do not have sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. <clears throat> so if a regular man uh, is aware of his own shortcoming, that, that, that he realizes that he is not perfect, he realizes that he, 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 he is a sinner, and then that person now compare himself to the innocently smiling and seemingly perfect model of a man as a pastor, he may begin to think there is something wrong with him. He may realize that he cannot pray as well, or derive as much joy from serving, or speak as eloquently as the church leaders. Subsequently, most men will shut down out of guilt or shame rather than press through and earnestly desire the higher spiritual gifts. Now, <clears throat> what this the, what we are saying, I want you to listen very carefully, is that many, many times we 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 we, we, we I have also, I have also gone through this stage before in my life where you, you are aware of your limitation. You are honest with yourself, you know this is my limit, this is this is what I'm good for. But rather than concentrating on your own shortcoming, you you, you now get into a, a situation in which you are now comparing yourself with with a, a, a like a pastor, you are comparing yourself with a bishop, or you are comparing yourself with somebody, a high, uh, somebody that that is already manifesting at the peak of his own calling. Now, what, how do you feel? There's a tendency that, that if you are not careful, inferiority complex we, we, we creep into it. And then, and then, and then you, 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 you can easily shut down or you become ashamed. Uh, and that, but the Bible is saying that, that especially in First Corinthians, can somebody read for me from the from the um, that scripture, First uh, Corinthians fourteen uh, verse one, First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse one, First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse one, fourteen verse one, yeah. Hmm. Especially prophecy. Now, the question I want to ask is, it, it, um, how do you advise uh, a situation such because this is this is something that is very common among uh, among I wouldn't say men alone, but but women also that that you realize your your limitation and you see somebody else manifesting at the peak of his own gift what do you do do you how do you how, how kind of what kind of advice can you give to such a person to to, uh, to to prevent him from 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 the consequences of becoming shut down out of guilt should she feel guilty or out of shame rather than press press on as you have already read in First Corinthians fourteen one, can you please, uh, uh, Doctor Swan, can you advise us? What kind of advice will you give to such a person? Who, because it, this is something that is very common in the ministry, and it leads to envy, it leads to to, to malice, it, it leads to 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 dissatisfaction, uh, um, especially. And we don't want that kind of institution in the main ministry because. All of us are we are differently gifted. 
So what, what can you really say about it? So, so what's the question? The question is, how, how will you address an issue where um, people, like, like uh, you, you notice that some people are, everybody, everybody knows their own limitation. But how can you now advise us not to be envious or, or feel ashamed of other people that are uh, exhibiting their 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 uh, gift at a higher peak. Obviously, we want to be like them. Uh, some some people cannot pray. Some people cannot cannot can uh, can uh, uh, not eloquent enough. But but what do you do for for to encourage such a person? What what can you say? As Christians, we, we ought to understand that we all have gifts. That's true. Um, and the, the gifts that are given, these gifts are given by the Spirit. That's right. And um, we are all not gifted the same. Some people have multiple gifts. And um, even with um, um, you know, with, with blessings, um, we all. I mean, last week we were talking. You were talking about. Um, I think you were talking about multiple. There was a question about um, the call. I mean, the call. You know, finding your your calling. calling. That's right. Yeah, and you do have people that have multiple calling. You know, they engage in um, multiple things. They have a gift of music. Some people can sing, and that's a gift. And um, if I cannot sing, I shouldn't envy them. Yes. Rather, um, you know, I should enjoy that gift that they are blessing me with because they can. Some people can play an instrument. Some people, um, I, I, I just, you know, some people um, um, educated. Some some people um, know how to do business. So, you know, so the gift comes in different ways. So uh, rather than you envy someone because of the gifts that they have. I think it is um, best to, um, you know, to, to see how you can tap into that that blessing, to that gift that has right. uh, been blessed with, so that you can also be a blessing, or you receive right. that, that blessing, or be a part of that blessing. That's right. And, and that's, I think, what we need to encourage the church, because, um, see many a times even in church when um, people are blessed with the gift people tend to be envious yeah of it, you know and um, that is not the way a christian should behave that's right thank you so much i, th I think it's very very important indeed thank you so much thank you so much now <clears throat> We, we, we read on. <clears throat> now, it, it said that the real and authentic Christian masculinity is exhibited in every type of manly personality. Take a minute to remember the various personalities of the apostles. From defending Jesus with a sword like a true warrior to begging to sit near to Jesus at dinner, the apostles were accepted by Jesus and demonstrated that there is no right way to be masculine. Even Jesus was fearsome while weeping around change collectors, as well as crying over Jerusalem and comparing himself to a mother goose, as we read in Matthew 23:37. The point is that we need to move past using our societal lens of masculinity, which are strength, confidence, power, charm, etc., and recognize that God has created every potential permutation of masculinity. Therefore, if anyone has a desire to be like God and ears to hear his wisdom, it's our responsibility to recognize their value and offer or reserve fellowship and ministry. 
what we are being told here is, is that we must never be like the Gentiles, like the unbelievers that want to uh, um, use their, 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 their talent, their gift, their masculinity to glorify themselves. That every, every like uh, in the era, this man has already explained to us, everybody has their own uh, uh, individual peculiar gifts. But if you're, but don't use your own gift to spite other people. Don't use your, your own gift to discourage other people. In the case of the, the disciples, for example, Peter was, uh, uh, apart from uh, the Kagbo, what is Peter noted for among the disciples? Can anybody tell me what is Peter, Apostle Peter, what is he noted for among the disciples? Ada Beng, what can you say about Apostle Peter? Pawaka. Apostle Peter, what, what can you say about Apostle, Apostle Peter? the apostle that that used sword to cut off the the high priest's son's ear when 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 the when, when the, the, the the jews came to arrest jesus christ in the garden of gethsemane one of the apostles broke that sword and cut off the ear the of uh, apostle peter so apostle peter is brave is very is brave right and 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 he um, is 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 an extrovert and is very very outspoken so that's why jesus christ said upon you peter i will build my church because the gate of heaven will not prevail against you but now we now have the opposite uh, thomas but what do you know about thomas apostle thomas what is peculiar about Apostle Thomas? He asked to see before believing. Thomas did. What is what? What does it mean to say Pop Thomas Didymus? I'm sorry. Say that again. Thomas Thomas Didymus. What? What is? What, what is? What, what, how do you, I mean? When they say about Thomas, what? What? what when they say some some. Uh, uh, what is what do you, okay? What do you say about Thomas? What do you believe about Thomas? Thomas was the one who, uh, when Jesus appeared, when he was not around, and when he came back and they were telling him, he, he kind of doubted what they were telling him. He wanted to see uh, the times of Jesus. Thank they, you. The, that, that is the un, unbelieving, unbelieving Thomas, right? Okay. And also two disciples, their mother came to Jesus to beg Jesus for a favor that let my children, one, one sit on your right hand and one sit on your left hand. Who are the two disciples? And anybody can answer that one. James and John. So, so that's what the, 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 the author is saying here, that um, we, we must be very, very careful that, that um, we, we don't use our masculinity you know, to glorify ourselves, that even Jesus Christ was very, very humble. Jesus Christ has strength. 
he has confidence, he has power, he has charm. But, but on top of it, he was very, very humble. So therefore, if anyone has a desire to be like God and has ears to hear his wisdom, it is our responsibility to recognize their value and often and offer all his fellowship and ministry. Then number six, men need time away from the family. Men need time away from the family. In our daily lives, we cannot escape the constant awareness that we have, we have expectations placed on us by ourselves, by our job, by our family, by our friends. Now, this one, it's a, it's, it's a pointer to all men that, that uh, we, every, every one of us, we, even in our place of work, we, we feel that you wake up in the morning, what, what it means is that you have expectations, your, your, your mind is not at rest, your mind is addressing what we're going to do at work today. Then, then it, and ourselves too, even your own life too, you are not free. You, you are not free with, with your own life to continue to think, what am I going to wear? What am I going to do? How am I going to live my life? How am I going to better my life? Then we, can, we continue to worry. Then our job, our family, then you continue to worry about your wife, about your children, about everything, about friends. And, and, and this is something that some people carry on all their life. Even when they retire, when they retire, they are still not at rest with themselves. Till they die, they are working, expectations, expectations, expectations. And that one brings us to the second point. He said, periodically, we need to remove ourselves from the situation where we are required to fulfill expectations and be free to pursue the passions and desire which God has given us as individuals. We need to communicate with people like us and who face the same struggles. We need comrade, comrade That is what, what the author is saying he, he, is how can we help the main ministry? How can we help ourselves in the main ministry? Now that all of us have come together tonight, now that all of us have now realized that all of us have one in inevitable, um, I wouldn't say weakness, but inevitable challenges, that is expectations upon our life, expectations of our family, expectation of our job, expectation upon our children. Now, to have a healthy family, to have a healthy main ministry, we have to break away occasionally. So now, what kind of recommendations can you make to help us to be able to break away? Is it is it occasional um, maybe a monthly or bi-monthly or, or, or quarterly picnic outside or, or we just go to a park all the men we, we take our sandwiches uh, or like a picnic or something like that what, what do you think we can do how do you think we can do to break away we are we can all, all, be, all be together and share and share the gospel of jesus christ together maybe for two hours for three hours or for for for, for just one saturday what kind of ideas can you can you can you inject so that so that we can plan against it? Yes, sir. I'm listening. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> what what we are saying is that. We have found ourselves now in, in, in a kind of a rat race in, in which we are constantly thinking, uh, we are constantly enslaved in, in, in uh, 
expectations the expectations means uh, inevitable or, or avoidable commitment we, we, we impose upon ourselves we are worrying about ourselves when our, about ourselves that these are my health my 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 status my this my that then on top of it we are worrying about the family my wife my children my this my that my housing then we are worrying again about our job how to keep my job how to do this how to do that and then we don't have any time at all for ourselves we don't have time at all for christ we don't even have time to discuss we we we, we this is this is the only time that men have together to come together to to discuss but how can we now help ourselves in the men ministry that we, 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 we will be able to pull ourselves completely from all this commitment because it, it's it, it's not healthy for us so that maybe once a month or once in three months or something that how can we pull ourselves out so that all of us can be together maybe in front of a, 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 a seafront or a beach or under a tree inside a, 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 a big park just for one 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 uh, 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 saturday or something like that uh, and, and everybody will drive back home fully fully refreshed when all of us will gather together and discuss what, how do you think it is possible for us To break away completely, to just break away from everyone, yes, from the world, yeah. Because I think Dr. Osman is in charge of planning. Um, Pastor Paul? So, this, this, yeah. So, Dr. Osman, what do you think? Uh, how do you think we can help ourselves in the main ministry? Especially at the time like this, a lot of um, um, us are going through a lot of challenges with um, the current situation. But uh, sometimes we don't come out and and um, share the challenges they're going through. But I think it's important for us to be reaching out as well. Um, so, so I think all of that can help. Uh, because one way or the other, someone might feel comfortable sharing with one particular person about what they might be going through, and through that, 
It's the um, access point that we can all, you know, support. That's correct. Right. Not individually, and I think there are challenges. So, um, but praying together um, is one way. Praying for each other is another way we can support each other. So, which means that. Um when hopefully we get, we get over this uh, COVID-19 and everybody can, we are all free to move out again. So an outing, maybe once in three months, will be a heavy uh, innovation for, for many ministries. Don't you think so? Did you say an outing? Yeah, like uh, maybe once in three months, all of us will just drive to a park, only the men, and, and then we, we, we take our picnic um, uh, park with us. Uh, and uh, all of us will be there together, share the word of God, um, you, you, you know, uh, uh, have fellowship together. Uh, 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 and we feel refreshed, don't you think? Don't you think so? Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, um, you actually touch on something that's very, very important. Like, um, you know, some people are just like scared of confining. Now, looking at uh, the dynamics we are in today, certain people, when you confide in them, yeah. they will be the very people that will go out there and then, you know, be saying things. And that is not uh, part of Christianity. When they say, when the Bible says we should be one keeper in everything, yeah. in everything, that is why we have spiritual leaders. That's right. In terms of Christianity, we cannot So, which means, it's a, if we can develop a main ministry that tolerates no pretension or yeah. judgment, then we can be very free and honest about our struggles with life. Yeah. We can create a place of freedom where we are able to share the movement of God in our lives and learn from the movement of God in other lives. So, so, which means that it is very, very imperative now that it, it is not the Monday intercessory prayer that, that uh, can help us now. Apart from that Monday intercessory prayer after, after this orientation course, we, we have to, to, to sort of set a day apart where all of us can come together online, maybe for one hour, and, and then share the word of God and share our experiences. And they encourage other people to talk. Because from what you have been, everybody has been noticing, even in Bible study, some people, some people are just quiet, they are just listeners, listeners, they never participate, they never contribute to anything. And it's not healthy for us. We want to encourage everybody to be able to, to interact, to be able to be proactive and talk and share their experiences, share uh, and ask questions. So I think, uh, Mr. Secretary, you pass that one on to, to the president. Uh, and maybe after, after the or orientation course, uh, we can sit down and find a day, uh, uh, agree on a day during the week where we can have that kind of uh, social interaction together. And then, then they said, the last one said, there are simply some things that... Um, you, yes, sir. Yeah, can I... Uh, yeah, I need your input. Yeah. Yeah. In Ghana, there are two places, okay, 
one is in the eastern region called Aswa Mountain. The other one is in the um, Shanti area. Yeah. Okay. Now, this, like, this two places is designed for people, I mean, it's for churches, individuals. Mm -hmm. They go there, they do. When you are there in Aswa Mountain, you go there just to pray. All right? That's so, right. Some of the churches, what they do is they gather some of the youth and they go there. All they do is they pray. Okay. Then they, they set up in groups. Okay. And they, talk, and they talk among themselves. Maybe if the parents pray, three and three and three and four and four and four. And they talk among themselves. They bring strong. Some issues and talk about, uh, you know, things, but mostly by the church also. So, after the, so that kind of way, when you go there, it brings them together, it bounds them together. Okay, so but if anybody says, I'm going to a Chua mountain, you know that person is going there to, or a group of people are going there, they go in there to pray. You don't go there to do for, uh, I mean, um, uh, any other things, but just bringing in, um, got your group together, okay? Then, some, some people even sleep there, okay, to the next morning, some of the group, they sleep there. Like and a camp, like, the, like, we call it a camp, isn't it? It's a church camp, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, kind of like a retreat. The, uh, that's what I, what I was thinking was, yeah, a retreat camp, yeah. That's right. Even I remember one time we went to Williamsburg. Okay, we spent two nights over there. So we we chant. When we get up in the morning, we do gongyo and we chant for maybe two hours or so, and then we we, we break. Okay, for young men, then we, we discuss all sort of things. <clears throat> they bring their uh, job issues or or school issues or family issues or, or, and, and we are able to you know brainstorm each other people might be needing a job some people might need a place to stay you know and i think it works sometimes because it's free for other people are talking about their issues they are able to also bring their their problems also uh we've been to um uh, bush garden and we we, we select an area you know a calm decent area then we go and we just uh, uh, have a great great uh, uh, um, a fellowship I would say all right so mm. uh, sometimes when you do this uh, people they, they they feel free to speak that's they right come out and they will come. okay really because they, they realize oh after this John is you know telling us this well, maybe I will go ahead and share this or I will go ahead and talk about this and now uh, people people feel free to talk about certain issues for whereby probably they will not be talking uh, on the, on that same issue as we are on the mind here that's right okay so, um depends how we, we orchestrate these things uh it will give some people opportunity to express themselves it will also give other people opportunity to uh even bring their needs Okay, somebody, you know, a mom will be uh, among the group might be looking for a job. Mm -hmm. But he will not bring it on, on here, on this line here. Nobody's going to come up on this line and say, hey, look, I need a job. That is true. You know, Very true. Uh, mm. 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 That is true. I think it's yeah. a very, very good idea. That's a very, very good idea. Um, a uh, point you that you have already brought up. I, I think uh, the secretary will make a note of it as a part of yeah. um, the the important thing that we have to accomplish in the coming new year. Yeah, thank you so much. There is a, there are simply some things. I think um, uh, uh, Pastor pa is trying to say something. Oh, Pastor pa, okay, you are here now. Yeah.
Yeah, Pastor Pa, I, I think this is one of the things that we include for us for next year. Salut. So, the, um, you know, this is so great. Um, 
just as um, you know, uh, and um, um, well, actually just stated, it's um, it is important, you know, for us to um, continue to work on our so the social aspects of our fellowship. That's right. And uh, um, you know, Mr. Pa called me a few weeks ago, and you know, um, you know, we talked about coming up with some ideas of you know ways that we can uh, ignite. And I've been thinking about that, and um, but of course, what's going on currently, it, it just makes things so much difficult to even but, yeah. do anything because there are so much we could there's so much we could do together. Games we can have as men, we can have games night. You know, yeah. where we come and we just sit down and play games. That's right. A, 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 a table tennis club, someone have a draft, what do you call you know, chess? Um, you know, yeah. someone have a, a, a chess game or all other card games. Because yeah. when you have those light moments, that's when you are able to discuss a lot of things. That is true. Right. You see, because there are light, light moments where you're talking, people are laughing, people are you know, joking, and you're able to release. You know, your, your challenges, we are able to talk, we are able to interact, and we, we get to know each other even better. So that's one, one way we can help each other. But also, on the health front, you know, there is a lot, when, especially when a man, you know, we, we we've been getting to the point where we're going to talk about health in, in one of these um, uh, uh, forums, we're right. going to talk about health, because again, when a man turns 40, there's a lot happening in our bodies that, is true. that we need to be aware of. And, and, and a lot of times, we don't talk about these things in church. Oh, you know? Oh. And these things are so, so critical. That's They're so, so critical for us to know, you know, when you experience this sign, what to do, what, you know, what, what are the things that you should be looking for? How to take care of yourself? Because the Bible tells us, I believe in, 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 third, in, third, James, in third John, verse one, chapter one, verse two, where you know the Bible says that we should take care of ourselves. You see, so the health and then the finance. A lot of men, a lot of us, don't know how to manage our finances. Because we either grew up in a home where we did not have a parent that taught us how to manage our finances, you know, how to, to, to do bookkeeping, how to, you know, so we, 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 we just live on a day-by-day -day basis. What comes in and spend here is, you know, so a lot of things that we all can learn from each other, you see, That's so true. I think if we can get into some of these things, and in terms of um, things that we do outside of the church, you know, like uh, I've been thinking about the Bible Museum, where we can we can go visit. I'm sure we can learn a lot about uh, the history of the Bible in, in DC. But right now we can't do it, you know. So so these are all things that I've, I've been thinking about, and um, you know that uh, hopefully. We can jump on as soon as we have the opportunity. Thank you so much. And that one brings us to the to the final uh, discussion, which is uh, he said there are simple. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is true. Even if we say, oh, you pay back, you're not paying nothing, come, but you still need money. 
to go back in your car to, to where we want to go or where we want to be morning. It's very important. And I was thinking about it. It might be another section where we can really have training. Somebody who really knows about planning, budget for the men, for us to learn how to manage our money. People get divorced. Homes are broken because of the lack of management of money. Thank you. I mean, no doubt about it. It's very important. That is, that is, that is very true. Thank you so much. And, and that's what the, the, this uh, last uh, um, topic is saying. Is that there are simply some things that your wife cannot understand about being a man. Absolutely. We can choose either to repress those concerns or to talk about them with trusting brothers. And this brings us back again to what Erda Osman Kagbo was telling us about the benefits of socializing together. There are a lot of people that are suffering silently as husbands in their houses. They, they find themselves in, in, inadequate as husbands. They, they suffer in silence, but when they come to church, they smile as if to say everything is okay. But the matrimonial home is, is in rock. And they cannot discuss it with anybody. And unfortunately, not even all pastors can be confided in. And we've seen so many cases of those problems. But when we now have a kind of this privilege and a, an opportunity to come together, where we are playing games, men will be free. The, the, the spirit will be free to explain, to to, to, to uh, express what, what is bugging them in their marital home. And so at that time that people, fellow men that have already gone through that kind of uh, experience, they say, this is how I manage it. And, that, uh, and this one brings us to 10 things that men want from their wives, because this is men's forum. This is men's forum. So I'm going to publish it for, 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 for us tonight, so, so, so that all of us can and print them out and study them so that so that if we find anyone relating to us or if, if anyone that may in the future may come even though you are newly married now you've not experienced it you'll be able to remember that by the way yes we have already touched these things it's because there are 10 things men want from their wives it's, a, it's no surprise that sex is super important to men but most times, men we admit that it's number one on their list for what they want in a marriage. And research suggests that men do tend to have higher sexual desire than women. However, many men have other desires outside of sexual relations or emotional needs. Husbands don't always ask their wives for what they want. And many have thoughts and feelings that they keep to themselves. For instance, some men feel a sense of responsibility to take care of their wives financially, even if she earns more, or they've worked out a dual income contribution to the household. And this example creates pressure that affects the relationship. So understanding is inner world will open you up to a world of understanding and opportunity. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm just going to just give you the bullet points. I'm going to print them out. It's for you now to read it. One of them is affection. See so why sex remains very important for most men. Many simply want to experience more affection. That is one. Then number two, believe in his capabilities. Many men think it's important for them to protect and provide for those they love. But let your husband know that you believe in his talents 
and skills are supportive of him. Behind the success of every man, there is a woman. So that is what it's saying here. That then number three is a understanding. Men want to know that you get them and you research suggests that feeling understood is an important part of a good relationship. They are often more logical and like to problem solve. So this has a value and creates a balance between women who are generally more emotional and in touch with their feelings. And one of the ways you can both show that you understand each other is by making a commitment to talk daily together. Communication is very important in every marriage. Then appreciation and affirmation. Most guys like to be patted on the back. One way to do this is by complimenting your husband often. Rather than overdoing it, make sure it's genuine and sporadic through the week. Then acceptance. We all want to be accepted for who we are and don't want others to try to change us. Men are often hurt and angered when their wives try to, to change them in particular. If it concerns their health and safety, it's understandable, but superficial characteristics aren't necessary to bring up. You will read that one too. And then say lesser chatter. If your husband is tired, involved with a project, or just generally isn't up for a chat, don't push it. Then respect. Creating a loving and memorable marriage starts with respect. One of the best ways a wife can show her husband that she loves and respects him is by actively listening to him when he talks and not interrupting. Then free time. Almost everyone has a desire for some quiet time alone. And a moment to re-energize, to regroup, and to reconnect with themselves. When your husband first gets home from work, you can give him this space by allowing him to unwind without any chatter or question. Then trust. Trust is vital to the success of any relationship. Couples build trust in healthy relationship by being honest with each other, communicating often, and learning how to fight fairly. And finally, companionship. Hopefully, you can say your husband is not only your lover, but also your friend. Staying friends and companions throughout the years require that you find ways to make quality time to be together and have new experiences. Marrying your best friend also means being mindful of how you talk to each other, not taking him for granted and making small sacrifices to please each other. Practice using kind words, show your gratitude for him daily, and choose to watch his favorite local sports game instead of your go to show now. So I'm going to publish this. Men will read it and you must find a way of communicating it to your wife. If your wife now see that this is what she can do to improve the relationship, it will make you a better, a better married man. It will improve your relationship in the, in the family, in the house. And you too, you'll be able to now find that where you, you have been shortcoming, where, where you have not actually been encouraging uh, 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 these uh, 10 points to manifest in your marriage. So I'm going to publish it tonight, print it out, read it and study it, and then, and then uh, uh, picture yourself in each of these points. Where have I not? Where have I failed to, to, to play my own part? And where does she have to improve herself? She's your wife. Sit down together and discuss together with her. And it, and these are the things that we should be discussing in main ministry. How we can build a good home? Because one thing is, like we have already read in, in, in Timothy, if if a pastor has not cannot a big his own good home, he cannot be a church of Christ. So you must be happy at your home, 
you must be happy at your relationship before before you cannot touch the life of other people in the church. So um, we have, the time is fast spent now. Hopefully by by next next Monday we will just complete this paper paper two and we jump on paper three. We finish paper three so that uh, the remaining uh, weeks of the month the health ministry can come online. So is there any any question before we be closed? Any question? Is there any question before we close? Yes, sir. Next week, by the grace of God. Okay, so Monday will be the last day, and then the rest. Yeah, yeah, the rest, the rest, the rest. Yes, for health, yeah. Okay, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. So I want you by next Monday. Hmm. Want you to conclude anything that is left? We still want to do it. <laughs> to have health health um health health and wellness awareness finish our orientation course, we will go back again to our ancestry prayer on Mondays. Okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. No problem. So can Pastor Pa close us in prayer? Thank you. 